Hi, I'm Adam Meyer of Mill City Luthery in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in this video, I'm going to do the go through the process or a video diary of replacing the fingerboard on this Ibanez RGT 42 DX. Uh, the customer brought it in and had a rosewood fingerboard, and he's a big fan of Jackson's, has some other Jackson's, and wanted this to be more like his Jackson. So I put on an ebony fingerboard, mother of pearl inlays, and binding. So uh, here we go with the rest of the video. It's a close up of the fingerboard as it is when it came in. Nice rosewood fingerboard with a, a I think they, they still call this shark tooth inlays. It has the, the double points on it. And it is a bound fingerboard. Currently, the biggest issue with getting this fingerboard off, if I can turn this, the concern for me is that the binding. When you construct a guitar like this is even with the bottom surface of the fingerboard but Ibanez taped up this uh, binding when they went to spray it and the black actually goes over that seam so for me I'm going to have to scrape the finish off the side of the binding just to the point to find out where that seam is between the neck wood and the fingerboard and binding I don't want to attempt pulling this fingerboard off without knowing right where that seam is. Otherwise, I could cause a lot of damage to the finish. Uh, you know, that is the, the black finish. I, I just want to get the fingerboard off of here. So I have the guitar disassembled. Now it's time to establish where the bottom surface of that fingerboard is. So what I'm going to do is I will first remove the frets. Um, that way I can move along without the bumping of the frets. I can take my, try and measure where this is, uh, the, the depth down here. And then I can set my calipers and try and scribe a line along the binding. And I won't be uh, bumping on these frets. Plus, when I'm peeling this fingerboard off, I'm going to be using my, my heat blanket. Uh, it'll be a lot easier. Uh, the heat will go directly into the wood right away. Plus, with the, the frets removed, the fingerboard will be more uh, willing to flex as I, I peel it off. So it'll be easier to get this off. So fret removal comes next. Let's see if I can get a close-up here. So what I'm doing to try and uh, figure out where the actual uh, surface is between the fingerboard and the neck I came down here to an inconspicuous area. This is, uh, you know, the treble side of the fingerboard. So you, you have to flip the guitar all around to see if what I was doing here or anything. You can see there's a little bit of black paint there, and I've scraped down below it. And right in there, I can't really get close enough just barely started to get to the maple. So that's, I know how far down, because as you can tell, there's a little bit of black that's sprayed over the binding to hide where the, the edge is. So now that I've established where that maple is, I'll use my calipers, um, you can use a depth gauge or whatever, and I'll figure out that depth, and then I can just use the sharp point on my calipers to then scribe the rest of the finish all the way down the neck and then I'll follow through with a razor blade and I can cut that finish right there. Um, once again the idea is I'm going to be heating this up I'm going to be using a spatula to peel it off not only do I need to know where that glue lining is but also this will help prevent the, the black finish from chipping as I'm uh, pulling this off because I'll, uh, I'll have established a, a break in it and it's going to be nice, clean, sharp break. Um, of course, when the fingerboard is off, I will then resurface the neck. There may be some glue buildup. Um, most likely, there will be some little bits of rosewood that's remain on there that I'll need to clean off. But uh, that's uh, my method. I don't know if you can see the line I've already scribed in there. But uh, you know, I just have to do the other side and move on to getting the board off. Now to get started, I'm going to get this piece of 
binding removed. I've been heating it up a little bit so it's soft and I can get a razor blade in between the wood and the plastic. I'll, I'll get this taken off and then I'll have a place to start putting my spatula in on the bottom end of the, uh, the fingerboard here. I'm going to work towards the peg head. I have this in my string tension simulator to hold it in place while I have the heating blanket on. So I can hold it in place if I have to use a little bit of force to kind of get to a, a spatula underneath anything, the guitar will be held in place. So getting this removed. It's been, heating blanket's been off for a few minutes. See how easily this comes off now? So, and there it is. Almost, well, coming apart. So I'm going to put the heating blanket back on, and I now can go for right there with my spatula and work it underneath once I get this hot again. All right, we're midway through. Maybe about a third of the board is loose. You can see I've got uh, I'm loose here. And the binding comes loose a lot easier than the fingerboard, so I'm just kind of peeling it off as I go, because I can also then get in on the side here. So this is the process. I'll put the heat blanket back on for, you know, maybe five minutes or so, then I'll come back and uh, start at it again. Um, you know, just keep working my way down, take some of the, the binding off as I go so I can get in there. A little bit of black chipped away there, but that's so insignificant, I'll be able to touch that up and you'll never be able to know. But so far, everything is going well. And uh, I'm actually kind of surprised the fingerboard hasn't broke yet. I might be able to get this off in one piece, which would be nice. Maybe a little, little souvenir for the owner. And it's off. Of course, we've got a little bit of the, the you know melting of the plastic wrap that they put around the, the truss rod. It's a reinforced neck. Came off real cleanly. There's no maple left on that. I'll be able to clean this up really well. Just a little bit of glue residue left behind. So in preparing uh, the, the neck to have the fingerboard glued on, you see I have the, the truss rod removed. It just slides out. Um, this guitar in particular has some reinforcement bars in here. But my own personal deal, these, these are in well. They aren't loose or anything. But you can see here, got all this gap. And also if you go along the edges, there's gap. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking some super glue. And I'm just filling these in. Once it's all filled in, I will then resurface the neck in preparation to have the fingerboard put on. But uh, personally for me, other than any type of little gap for the, the truss rod to move in the neck, I think that all voids should be filled up. So I'm, you know, on my own instruments, my bases, I uh, put in these reinforcement bars as well. I make sure that they are completely solid, that there is no room for any air bubbles or anything nothing can come loose so i just fill it all together time to start routing for the inlays um, i have the binding glued on the fingerboards all cut out everything's trimmed to size and i've got my inlays laid out here and um Establish the center line on here. It's kind of hard to see with the ink. Uh, what I like to do when it's ebony is I'm going to use some uh, some white tape when I'm going to put that on because it's ebony. And I'll get everything lined up and then I'll trace my inlay and I'll be able to get the, the primary routing out uh, with this what's left of the tape. It'll be a nice bright line for me to do. So I'm going to start going through and I'm going to Plan all these out, get them all traced out, measured out, and get them centered and all located. And uh, probably get a, a little bit of a video of me doing that 
and um, then it'll be time to move on to the next step. Okay, to explain my process here, so you can see I trimmed these down, I uh, got them to the appropriate size, okay, and then I have them all traced out here. Uh, I like using masking tape because it, it's high contrast to the ebony. I can see where I'm going. Now, uh, keep in mind, these are rather thin. Uh, actual mother of pearl is uh, quite thin. You've got 16-inch radius fingerboard. That's the, the, the curvature of the surface here. So you can imagine I have to trim off the sides a little bit. This will be put into the fingerboard and the, the edges out here are going to get thinned out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do the initial routing to put these inlays in, but then I'll glue the fingerboard onto the guitar first, level the fingerboard most of the way, glue the inlays in, and then finish it off. Just when you're gluing on a fingerboard, you can end up, even if the neck that you're gluing it to is flat and everything, pressure, wood, whatever, you can end up with a high, low spot or whatever. So I don't actually want to put these into the fingerboard just yet. I'm just going to do the primary routing because I'd much rather do that on uh, when it's off the guitar. So I'm, I'm using this high-speed Dremel. I don't want to have any accent where I slip off, could hit the, the guitar at all. So I'm doing this kind of in a, a you know, inefficient way. It'll be a lot more efficient for me to inlay the the shell now, but I just don't want to get to where, you know, like this, uh, which is going to be the 24th, this tiny little tip out here where I'm thinning that out so much because the, the fingerboard isn't as level as it could be. So that's my method for this. Um, others may do it differently, but uh, I'm trying to get this really refined. Uh, Total heavy metal guitar, it's supposed to play super low and fast, so this is going to be my process to do it. through, measured out where to put the side dots, and I'm doing it with a little vise on my bench because I went and took it down to my drill press to, you know, to see how that would work, and there's just too much of a, a vibration to do this accurately. Um, normally, I, I try and do it there because you got a nice smooth uh, motion with the drill press, but in this situation, I'm just going to have to do it by hand. Uh, I'm doing it before the fingerboard goes on the guitar because if I screw up, I can pull the binding off, put on a new piece of binding. All right, I'm just trying to backlight the, the fingerboard here before I glue it on. Even though I, I pre-order them, they come out with drum sanders and everything, I'm still going to have to correct that little bit of a hump out of the fingerboard before I glue it on to the neck. And I'm going to do the same thing on uh, the neck wood. Um, I don't remember if I have that in the video recorder or not, but I'm going to make this perfectly flat before gluing on and um, proceeding. So here we are. I'm uh, most of the way done with fretting the neck. Uh, I've gone through and finished off the leveling of the fingerboard. You can see I've, there's these are all perfected around the edges. Gone, went in and filled in uh, any little gaps from carving. Then uh, went back and finished off leveling the fingerboard. Now it's time to get it fretted 
And here's here's the deal. This is a, a bound fingerboard. You have binding on both sides. So the fret obviously isn't going to fit all the way through. Um, the fret wire comes, um, you can either get it in strips, cut individually, or I get it in uh, these big long uh, rolls. I'll, I'll get it in like uh, many feet long because, you know, I, I go through this stuff a lot. And um, this is what a piece looks like when you clip it off the roll. But I need to take this tool and I'll cut the tang back. See how that's trimmed back right there. That will fit in between the binding. Set that there. Can I get the idea? Uh, but before I pound it in, I like to prep. I'll go through and uh, clean out the, the fingerboard slot. Um, there really isn't much to worry about here because this was a pre-slotted board, but I did glue on binding on the side so there was uh, some glue that built up maybe about to here in some of the slots. So I need to, to claw that out of there, get it all nice and clean. Then I'll take three corner file and, you know, uh, I'm usually going this way, but kind of the camera's in the way. And I'll uh, file the top corners of the slot back. And the reason is, if, if I'm able to show close enough here, this little corner in here in the fret, that isn't perfectly square in there. It's kind of rounded. Frets are measured to thousands of an inch, but still there's little things about it that you need to kind of, kind of you know, alter to kind of get a, a perfect fit. So I, I bring these corners back on top just a little bit, so then the bead will sit down all the way. Otherwise, sometimes it can kind of catch up on that. So you want to trim back the, the top corners on the slot, get the, the tang cut back, and we'll file off a little bit there to make a nice, clean, flat surface that sits on top of the binding. And uh, sometimes I'll put a little bit of glue in the slot, not a lot, because the metal doesn't glue to the wood, you're just kind of helping hold it in place, fill in any possible gaps. This is a brand new fingerboard, not much to worry about, but I still do it for good measure. So um, I'm going to finish this off. Uh, attempt to get a video of me putting frets in, but uh, might with the pounding might be shaky with the camera. project is in the books. This is a, a pretty lengthy repair. Uh, if you decide you want to have something done like this by myself or anyone else, 
do expect it to take a while before you get your guitar to come back because you know I have other repairs that I need to do and um, there's just a uh, you work on it for like an hour or two this day, then you need to clamp something up and let it sit aside. Um, so, you know, it, it is not something that's a quick turnaround. Uh, but everything turned out great, plays great. Uh, the original fingerboard went from rosewood to ebony. Uh, this guitar is just a complete beast now. Um, finished touch up, I, I had to go through and, like I showed you, match the the original isn't truly white. The binding is white, but the clear coat isn't truly clear. Um, I did what I could with a little bit of touch up, but again, you know, this is, the guitar has been on stage a bunch. It's got dings all over it and everything, and it blends together really well. Um, and as noted, the fingerboard extended under the nut before, but the new fingerboard does not. You had that close up and made a, a nice wood shim glued in everything nice and secure. If you have a uh, guitar with the bolts going through the back of the neck for the locking nut, make sure you have lock washers on those, little, little lock washers. Keep this tight. Um, this guitar, you know, it has a little extra wood here, so it's stronger in here, but you see a lot of guitars that don't where they crack there, and the reason is because the screws were not tight. That'll also allow for the the nut to shift around. So you want to make sure that's nice and secure. Um, so this guitar was also in another repair video. Uh, I do repair on the bridge post holes. The body had cracked in there. So if you'd like to see that, I'll uh, try and add a link at the end of this video. If not, it's, it's in my video library. And uh, any repairs like this, if you're interested in having me do them, my contact information is at the end of the video. And we'll see you next time around.